Looks like we're live. Hey friends, welcome back to another live session. So what we're gonna do today is talk, it's gonna be a little informal. We're gonna talk about why the sauna is important right now with everything going on. You know, um, it's hard mentally, it's hard emotionally. Uh, the sauna has a lot of benefits uh, for the mind, for the for the well-being. Um, you know, living in Seattle oftentimes during January, February, I literally rely upon the sauna for like an antidepressant. You know, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of taking a bunch of allopathic medicines unnecessarily. I like to do natural remedies and things that I can do, you know, with, without side effects to optimize my mood and so forth. And it's no secret that it rains a lot in Seattle. And so I found like during this time when it's really challenging as much on the soul and on the mind and on our well-being, that we can leverage natural therapies like exercise, like uh, you know, breathing strategies, uh, meditation, and sauna to not only affect our body's immune system, but our mood. So that's why I wanted to you know, just hop on here. I know it's late. It's Friday night as we record this. I may or may not have uh, some wine right here. I'll let you decide uh, about that. But I just want to kind of share with you some science because, um, look, these are really, really challenging emotional times. Um, the inability to go hang out with friends and do dinner parties and be with family, I think is, is taxing on all of us. So I wanted to give you some solutions and some science to help you better understand how you can modulate the temperature in your environment and that there's actual research to back this up, which is absolutely fascinating. So I just wanna quickly check into my chat here and make sure that we're live. And um, just wanna see if you guys enjoy these, these live streams, you can uh, let me know by just leaving uh, a like button. I can't really see your faces. So it looks like we're, we're live right now. Uh, we got some people saying, uh, when I lived in Seattle, a blue light was really helpful in January. Absolutely, it was, or it is. Um, uh, so let me just pop out here and make sure that we're on uh, on this guy. So it looks like you guys can see me and you guys can see me, which is great. So we have a few of here now can see everything. So um, I posted this on my Instagram earlier today. And I just wanna mention, if we're not yet friends over on Instagram, my uh, handle is metabolic underscore Mike. So let's definitely connect there. I share this article and we're gonna unpack this a little bit here. But I wanna share with you some good news. This was published in The Lancet. And as many of you know, COVID-19 uh, is changing the world, changing the landscape of the world. Many people have filed for unemployment. Last numbers I checked were 6 million people in the last several weeks have filed for unemployment, unfortunately. and. What everyone is trying to understand is the case fatality ratio. How deadly is this disease? And again, we're gonna talk about sauna therapy very soon, but I wanna give you some good news because again, these models are pretty scary. When you hear the CDC and individuals and representatives from the CDC talking about the case fatality ratio and how the ER and ICU and the hospital beds are, are overpacked with people that are intubated and on a ventilator and can't breathe, I wanna share with you some good news. And here is an estimated update on this case fatality ratio. And if you look at this, this is parsed out by age and is comparing the SARS epidemic to uh, the, the SARS-CoV-2, which is what we're dealing with right now, to pneumonia. Uh, I'm sorry, to pneumonia, to uh, influenza, to the seasonal flu. Uh, ammonia, or um, uh, anyway, there's the wine kicking in. So I, I have had a frustrating day, and I admit I had a little wine beforehand. But what, what you want to see is compared to influenza and and just uh, SARS, um, this COVID-19 disease, the case fatality ratio really varies based in terms of age. And so we know that comorbidities play a big role here, as does age. And what's, what's reassuring in the positive light here is that 95% up to or 98% of individuals, depending upon their age, uh, survive this this disease. So I want you to have this, some some optimism, some hope here. And as we transition this conversation to talk really more about sauna therapy, what I want you to understand here is that the things that you do now in your diet and lifestyle will help to prevent you from getting sick, not only in the future, but if there's a potential second wave. So right now, a lot of us are not seeing our friends. We're not going to work. We're not going outside and, and cross-pollinating germs, for lack of a better word. So we're kind of in an, you know, in an artificial environment, so to speak. So what we, when when things get back to normal, hopefully soon, um, because a lot of us want to get back to work, we want to socialize with our friends and, you know, family, things like that. We're going to be sharing germs. So what can you do to balance and optimize your body's immune system right now and in the future? Well. 
sauna therapy is one of the things that I've leveraged for the past five years. So just give you a little insight. Uh, in the Seattle area, there's this gym called the Pro Sports Club. My wife and I have been members there since 2012, okay? They have a few different Finnish and Swedish classical saunas that go up to 190 degrees. So I've been you know, practicing sauna therapy for the better part of, gosh, close to 10 years now. I think it's very beneficial. There's a lot of science to show that it's supportive for the body's immune system, for helping growth hormone release, for affecting mood. So as I mentioned when we started this video, I literally rely upon the sauna to stay you know, mentally sane during Seattle winters. If I'm having a crappy day, if it's dark, if it's raining, uh, if it's depressing, uh, I will go in the sauna and, and I'll do sauna cold plunge, sauna cold plunge. And if nothing else, again, I, and I just wanna caveat this because I haven't yet done a little caveat disclaimer, um, you have to work with your healthcare practitioner. Things we talk about in this video are just my interpretation of the science. We cannot cure, treat, prevent, or diagnose any disease, okay? However, there is a lot of data showing that sauna therapy can affect the immune system in a favorable manner. So um, let's get into some of those some of those specifics so that you understand this. And let me just, as we transition into this, I want you to realize that the preponderance of data when it comes to sauna therapy in terms of research has been conducted in the realm of cardiovascular disease in terms of lowering blood pressure, affecting lipid levels, and affecting uh, various uh, ejection fraction parameters and things of the sort. Now, some of the studies that have been done, and I haven't read all of them, and I plan to do that and write a little ebook to share with you because I'm a huge fan of this. In our home, actually, we have an infrared sauna, which I love. However, it only goes up to 160 degrees. So, <clears throat> Before we get into the science, what I would love to do is actually help you better understand the difference between an infrared sauna and a classical Finnish or Swedish sauna. Because I think a lot of people have this perception that infrared saunas are somehow superior or better to classical Finnish or Swedish saunas. And I want you to realize that the mechanism of action of how sauna therapy affects the body is by raising core temperature, by affecting heat shock proteins, and it's really heat mediated. So it doesn't matter you know, if you get the heat from an infrared source or from a classical, just regular heater, it doesn't really matter the source of the heat as long as the heat's there. Now, when I first heard and first saw, when I first went to the sauna at the Pro Club, I saw the temperature said 180 degrees Fahrenheit. I thought, that's gotta be a joke. Like there's no way human beings can live in a, in a, you know, or be in a room for an extended period of time, a sauna uh, with cedar wood and everything for at 180 degrees for any length of time. Now, the reality is, is you will build up your tolerance. I remember the first time I went into the 180 degree sauna, I lasted maybe six, seven minutes. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get out of here. I can't tolerate this. You know, and interestingly, the inability to tolerate extreme heat is also related to my inability at that time to tolerate extreme cold. So again, I don't have scientific evidence to prove that there's a correlation here, but the more that you're able to tolerate heat, I found, the more that you're able to tolerate environmental extremes of being cold. And again, I think this is a proxy for overall resilience. And so I'm, you know, as a human going through dark times, if, if we were going through what we're doing right now, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, back when I was a teenager or a 20 something, I would probably be having suicidal ideations. I would be thinking, gosh, I don't know if I've, I can make, make it through this. This really sucks. Like what's the point of living if we're stuck at home? Like we can't see our friends. Like I, I really feel like I would have like been crushed by this. And I feel like a lot of people might be experiencing those same symptoms and feelings. And I just wanna let you know that things that you do in your lifestyle can really affect your mood and your mental state and your mental well being and make you more resilient. Because if you can say to yourself, hey, I can live in a, and, and, and do a 20 minute session at 180 or 200 or 220 degrees, let me just tell you, let me pause that, that resiliency conversation and tell you when you travel to different parts of the world, and I'm not you know, a world traveler per se, but I've been to South Korea twice. I've been to Latin America. I've been to Indonesia and different parts of the world. In, in Seoul, South Korea, sauna therapy is a big deal. There's these bathhouses and things like that where people do contrast. And the saunas in South Korea and Seoul, at least the ones that I've been to, go up to 220 degrees. 
And interestingly, so the first time I went to Seoul was back in 2014. November of 2014. This was a little bit after, maybe a year or two after I started, you know, regularly doing the sauna. And I remember going into the sauna and it was hot as hell, man. I mean, there was these these older gentlemen in there. They were in their 70s, were they, their 80s. They were talking up a storm. I couldn't understand a lick of what they were saying, but they were able to just stay in this thing for like what seemed like an eternity. I was only able to sustain there for about 10 or 20 minutes. Maybe it was like 12 minutes, something like that. And and I remember looking, and I, it was in Celsius, and I did the conversion in, in in hindsight, you know, after I left the sauna, but it was well over 200 degrees. And that reminded me and made me think that other cultures, this is part of their lifestyle. So again, it was a group of men totally naked here in the sauna in the U.S. I mean, people are covered up, men are covered up. They're really scared of exposing their genitals. Uh, when I was in Santiago, Chile last November, and I'll share with you a video of this with Ryan Lowry and a few other people, um, the sauna there, again, was 220 degrees. And so, again, this is part of what other cultures are doing to maintain their health. And here in the U.S., we're not really hearing much about the lifestyle stuff. We hear more about, okay, eventually there's going to be a vaccine for the SARS coronavirus. There's going to be you know, remedies and, and uh, antiretroviral drugs and corticosteroids and everything like that. But it's pretty amazing that we can manipulate our body's physiology and affect our body's immune system, which I'm going to get into very soon, by changing the temperature. So if you're excited about natural therapies like that, please hit that like button. That lets me know that we should do more videos like this. Let me just see what's going on. So we got a few of you on here. You know, the downside, okay, so I have someone here that says 220 degrees is the boiling point of water. That's incredible. It absolutely is incredible. Okay, if, if you were to ask a random person on the street, okay, I have this room that's gonna be 220 degrees. I want you to go in there for 10 minutes. I'll give you $1,000. Most people would say, oh my gosh, that's gonna kill me. I'm gonna die. But you don't die. You sweat profusely. And when you sweat, you excrete a lot of persistent organic pollutants and heavy metals. Uh, we've talked about this study before, the blood urine, the bus study, blood urine sweat study, where heat-induced sweating causes release of heavy metals. Now, Sweating also causes the release of pot, the, uh, favorable minerals like zinc, like magnesium and things like that. So just a small plug, friends, if you do sauna, which I recommend, we have our Myo Relax and Calm, which has taurine, magnesium. You add in a little Redmond Real Salt. This is perfect for after the sauna or if you do hot exercise, brought to you by our partner, Myo Science Nutrition, M-I-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com, Myo Science Nutrition. My Relax and Calm is something that I would highly recommend. You know, I, I recently, no kidding, just last night had someone on Instagram say, hey, I just started sauna therapy because I heard it was helpful for you know, everything that's going on right now, uh, but I woke up feeling really lethargic. What do you think that was? And I said, well, did you take any electrolytes? Did you take salt after the sauna? And they said, oh, actually, no, I didn't. I didn't really do anything. I just had some water, okay? So water is helpful. But if you're excreting a lot of sodium through your sweat and potassium and, and losing electrolytes from the heat, which has all these positive, heat has all these favorable attributes, then you might, you could run into a deficiency in electrolytes. And I admit, I didn't know this back in the day. So that's why we created the My Relax and Calm and the DIY electrolytes. So definitely check that out if you want to get into sauna therapy, which I highly recommend doing. Um, so here's, here's one of these studies that, that really blew my mind. And again, this goes back to things that we've talked about on this channel before. We've talked a lot about autophagy. And one of the things that you may remember me talking about, this, this goes back about 18 months ago. There was a study in the Plus One Journal of Biology that had showed that individuals, th th basically what the researchers did is they stratified individuals for their metabolic flexibility and their, their uh, exercise background. They had sedentary, overweight people fast for 36 hours, and they had physically fit, lean people fast for 36 hours. And they did some uh, cellular biology and looked at autophagy biomarkers, Becklin-1, and all these different autophagy initiation proteins. And what they found is that after the same duration of fasting, there was a differential response in the amount of autophagy that was induced in the overweight, sedentary people compared to the lean people that were physically fit. Autophagy was increased in the people that were physically fit. So one of the things that I like to remind people is when you're thinking about how long you should fast based upon your, your goals, I like people to remember like, okay, well, am I physically fit and metabolic, metabolically flexible or overweight or sedentary? 
The people that are physically fit and, and metabolically flexible, which I recommend doing exercise, you don't need to fast as long because autophagy is more sensitive. Well, take that same thinking process and apply that to the sauna. Here's what the study actually showed, and I'll share with you the research right now, which I think is interesting. If you look here, what these scientists figured out, and the reason, let me just give you a little backstory, and I'll get back to the physical fit versus unphysically fit and the differences in immune system increases during sauna therapy. The scientists were, were trying to figure out because they know that prolonged and intense endurance exercise is a stress on the body's immune system. So they wanted to see if endurance trained athletes who are training at a high volume, if, if in the post-workout window, they could help to boost their immune system so they were less susceptible to infectious disease, then, then maybe that would be beneficial so that near race time or near intense training pressures they could reduce the risk of these athletes getting sick and therefore they could you know, continue training and theoretically perform better in whatever event they're going to be participating in. So they had a control group that was you know, sedentary, relatively sedentary compared to the intervention group. And what's interesting is all these different immune markers and you're gonna see these you know, right below, let's see, if we go right here, okay, this is the table you want to be paying attention to. You can hit the pause button, take a screenshot. I would encourage you to check this out, and I'm going to update the YouTube description below so you have access to this uh, after the fact. But what I want you to pay notice to is the neutrophil count. The neutrophil count is statistically significantly increased only, to the last time I checked, only in the athletes. Now, you might be saying, what does neutrophils have to do with the price of eggs in China, Mike? Well, your neutrophils are your first line defense in the innate immune system. And in the context of all this stuff that's going on right now, and you know what I'm referring to, neutrophils are the first line of defense in the context of this virus. In fact, individuals that are that compare healthy people that get infected with this disease compared to individuals who end up in the ICU and have severe disease states, the healthier folks that don't need to be intubated and, and hospitalized have higher neutrophils compared to the folks that are in the ICU and on a you know intubated on a ventilation system. So neutrophils are very important. They also looked at lymphocytes and total white blood cell counts. So again, athletes have a different response to even sauna therapy. So when people say, well, Mike, do I need to do the sauna or not? Well, I think it's an interesting question. If you don't do any exercise, then you probably should, yeah, do the sauna because it's it's better than nothing. And we know that, but but if you do a lot of exercise, you may not need to do the sauna as often or as, as frequently because we know that exercise by itself causes the release of sweat. And sweat, you know, is, is part of, you know, just creating body heat is, is part of what's affecting these heat shock proteins. So, let me just pause here because not everyone has access to a sauna, especially now that gyms are closed. So I'm getting you excited about sauna therapy in the sauna and you're going, Mike, dude, chill out, man. My gym is closed. I don't even have access to a damn sauna. So what do I do? Well, um, let me just clear this layer so we have a full screen and I'm actually going to have a sip of dry farm wines. I might offend a few of you, but... Um, Friday nights during this quarantine, I have been drinking wine. <laughs> um, anyway, so here's what you need to understand, okay, when it comes to heat, is when you exercise, you create sweat, okay, you heat, you get you get sweaty. So the poor man's sauna would be what individuals, you know, football players and athletes did back in the 80s, right? They did exercise with, even if it was hot out, with a, like a jumpsuit on, where they would wear like a sweater, sweatpants, thick socks, so a poor man's sauna is get really damn hot naturally. How could you do this? You could do yoga in your house and you crank up your thermostat so it's really hot. If you don't like to do yoga, you could do air squats. You could do burpees. You could do jumping jacks. You could do push-ups in your home and beforehand, an hour beforehand, you crank up the thermostat so it's really warm. That would be a poor man's sauna. I'm not saying you're going to get all the benefits that we're talking about that are linked in these studies and I'll just throw up this image so that our new viewers can actually see the physiology that we're talking about and that's so exciting, particularly during this time because I, I failed to mention this and I, I do want to mention this. When we think about the common, the most common disease comorbidities that increase the mortality and the disease severity in individuals infected and ha ha that have this COVID-19 disease, guess what? type 2 diabetes, 
and various cardiovascular related diseases, including but not limited to low ejection fraction, hypertension, uh, cerebrovascular disease. If you look at this diagram showing and elucidating and, and giving us a visual interpretation of all of these benefits from a long-term health perspective that are linked with regular sauna therapy, you can see that various cardiovascular risk parameters and cardiovascular disease parameters are indeed influenced in a favorable manner. Moreover, inflammation, long-term inflammation per this picture is shown to be reduced as is short-term you know, immune system activation is increased. So... To me, this is really powerful stuff. And I'll just say, I mean, I rarely get sick anymore. And of course, I'm doing a lot of things compared to what I used to do. But regular sauna therapy and then doing co contrast and things like that have really helped me. So I've been talking for a, a while now. I do want to go back to this image and just, you know, uh, you know, it's not image. It's a, an overview of the different white blood cell count shifts that are associated with regular sauna therapy so that you have an idea. And the point here to illustrate and drive home is that more physically fit athletes have a greater increase in various immunological parameters when it comes to sauna therapy compared to sedentary controls. So get off your butt and start exercising. Um, this is the, the paper that I wanted to, to share with you. You know, we don't talk a lot about mental health on this channel, but with everything that's going on, mental health is a big freaking deal. Uh, as someone that's prone to you know anxiety, depression, I would say melancholy sometimes. Uh, I, as an extrovert, I really like, I thrive off being around other people. It's really challenging right now because it's hard to connect with other people. Okay, so that doesn't mean you go jump off the bridge. It means you figure out other solutions to work through these problems. And so look, a little exercise, a little meditation, Changing your physiologic state. That's what I found for me to be the most effective. So going for a very intense exercise, uh, really being mindful. So doing some breath work, doing some hyperventilation, followed by retention and holding that breath in for as long as I can. You know, feeling really present, that can really uplift your mood and make you feel alive and make you realize that everything passes every moment that, you know, we're never the same in five minutes, right? So this moment of feeling like, oh my gosh, you know, my paycheck, my bills, my everything, like what's going on with the world right now, this moment will pass like every other scary moment in the future or in, in, in the past that's that's uh, happened to us. So, and to make a long story short, studies have actually, these scientists are in this particular study, they did a review and looked at individuals with psychosis and various psychiatric issues and found out that sauna therapy can affect those states. So again, I'm not saying you go off your medication if you're on medication to affect your brain, but I am saying that uh, you know there's ample data to show that thermal stress of both cold and hot can affect mood in a favorable manner. All right, so you know I've been talking now for a while, but I do want to let you guys know that that these podcasts are brought to you by our very own Myoscience Nutrition. If you decide to do sauna therapy or if you decide to do any sort of contrast or exercise, one of the things that I do recommend is our Myo Relax and Calm because it has taurine, magnesium, L-theanine, a lot of things that can, that can help you with your body's electrolyte balance and to support a relaxed mood. So L-theanine and taurine and magnesium together, along with Myo Inositol, it's a really unique combination. A lot of our clients like that. So please check that out and support our show over at myoscience.com. So let's get into some of your questions. There's a lot of people that are here. I'm super grateful that that all of you are here. We have our usuals here. We have Spive21, I saw Spive there. Who else we got? We got Mike. Um, Mike says you're a genius. I don't know about all that. I, I would. I appreciate you, though, uh, for uh, saying that. Renee says, uh, Rhonda loves the sauna. Yeah, Rhonda Patrick has been a huge advocate for sauna therapy. Uh, I do want to give credit where credit is due. My friend Ben Lynch was the one that introduced me to the infrared sauna technology. So four years ago, my wife and I, actually my wife, Deanna, bought this for us, for our family, on my birthday. So um, I'm a huge fan of sauna therapy. Now, let me, with that being said, what I would recommend, if you're considering getting a sauna, it depends on the space that you have. I think a, um, an infrared sauna is great if you have a very small space. If you have a yard, I recommend just going with a, a you know conventional kind of Swedish or Finnish barrel sauna. I'm trying to work with the folks over at Almost Heaven Saunas to do an unboxing video because I've had this dream for a very long time of building a sauna in our backyard. And friends, by the way, 
Should I mention? I'm, all right. So what we're doing is we're building an Airbnb in our backyard. And the goal of that is that you can come, any of you, if you want, you can come to our house. You can learn about chickens, right? We're going to get more pigs. We can do contrast. We can go in the sauna. We can talk and everything like that. So we're doing, we can cook real food. So that's one of the things that we're working on during this crazy time. So if you're interested in that, if you think that's like even remotely interesting, you come hang out with us for a night. It won't cost you anything. Um, and you want to do some sauna, do some cold plunging. Let me know what you think about that. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there to see if there's even any interest. Maybe people are like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't care about chickens, Mike. Just whatever. Tell me science stuff. Um, if you're interested, just let me know about that because we're we're working on that. So, um, And that's why a sauna would be cool. So we can just go in the sauna, talk about life, talk about all this science, weird stuff. The, uh, the, this whole thing is weird. Uh, but the sauna would be key because interesting conversations happen in the sauna. And then you go in the, the cold plunge. And look, all the science that we've been talking about is exciting, but let's just keep it really simple. I think one of the main benefits of sauna therapy and contrast therapy, and contrast meaning you go from hot to cold or cold to hot, man, it is it, it really brings down um, that sympathetic nervous system response and improves that bo your body's parasympathetic nervous system response and calms your body down. Um, so anyway... Um, what is, someone says, uh, Kimberly, Kimberly, thanks for being here. Kimberly says, what is neutrophils? Neutrophils are a type of white blood cell. It's a type of lymphocyte. And neutrophils are your body's, one of your body's kind of first line defenses. And tomorrow I have a video for you all about how sugar and hyperglycemia affects neutrophils in a negative way. And so this may be why we see an increased disease severity in individuals that have diabetes, obesity, and things of the sort. Because if you're metabolically flexible, the theory goes that your neutrophils, your, your body's own immune system could surmount some some problems. So um, anyway, Renee says she's interested. Mike says, uh, you seem to know your stuff. Thank you for that. All right. Slavav says, do pigs sweat? All right. So all of you know we, we processed our backyard pigs. And I have a very graphic video that I'm going to share with you about that because a lot of you eat bacon and I want you to kind of understand where bacon comes from. I don't want to gross you out. I'm not trying to scare you, but I feel that we need to understand the sacrifice of animals. I see a lot of people waste food and it just irks me. I, I don't even know, you know, I made fun of a, a substitute teacher back in like the third grade for saying the word irk, but it irks me when people throw away food that is that was formerly a product of a living human uh, animal, a living being. And um, so I want to share with you that video um, of, of, our, of our backyard pigs that were processed. It, it, you'll learn something. You, I didn't know that bacon, I thought bacon was, the, was derived from the visceral fat of the animal. It's more of the serratus and oblique muscles on a pig. But anyway, uh, interesting stuff here that we're going to talk about. So um, Sunflower Sadie says, I shouldn't have had that Snickers. You know what? So here's a really good tip. So if you had a Snickers, look, I'm having wine as we're filming this video. So I can't really, you know, critique you for having Snickers. Now, I will say the wine is from Dry Farm Wines. It's organic. It's biodynamic, etc. But, you know, if we think about what Snickers and processed food does to our body, it raises inflammation. It raises blood sugar. So what are some things you could do? You can go for a very brisk walk. You can do 10 to 20 to 30 air squats. You can do some burpees. You can do some push-ups. So I, I don't want to give give you exercise as a remedy to overcome junk food so that every time you eat junk food, all you do is exercise and you think you have this, this balance. But in the odd event that you do have a hyperglycemic situation, practicing what I like to recommend to clients, an 80-20 principle where 80% of the time you're eating pretty good. 20% of the time you, you have a little bit more flexibility. And if anything... That provides a little mental reprieve from our strict dietary regime. And so what you can do in that situation is go for, do some exercise, go for a walk, go run up the stairs, go run around your building, do some push-ups. That can, you'll be surprised if you wear a 24 hour continuous glucose monitor, your glucose will drop like a rock. So I'm not saying it's going to totally, you know, circumvent all of the challenges that you might be, that might be associated or ascribed to eating a Snickers bar but it will certainly help quite a bit. Someone else is having wine too. <laughs> All right, I'm not the only um, COVID-19 um, person here that's having an issue. So uh, again, I don't know if pigs sweat or not, 
but that that's that, to me that doesn't that's not really relevant. Uh, Spive twenty one is really helping out with some of the um, some of the stuff. Some M Skinner saying, "Get off the crack pipe. You talk too fast." Do I really talk that fast? I I, I don't. You know what? You all want to know something crazy? <laughs> um, no, I don't do crack. Um, when I was fourteen, I had a friend of mine. His name is Blair. And he, he told, this is crazy, right? So this is where bullying and things come in. He, 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 I remember he told me, he goes, Mike, you talk so slow. Why do you talk so slow? I remember exactly where we were, what I was doing. And ever since then, I've made it a volitional effort to talk fast because I was like, maybe I do talk really slow. Maybe people think I'm dumb. So I apologize if I talk fast, but literally, I'm not intending to talk fast. I don't feel like I'm talking. I'm just talking. So I apologize if I talk fast. And I will make more of a volitional effort to slow things down. But part of the reason why I do maybe talk fast is because, no kidding, <laughs> something that my friend said to me uh, way back when I was 14 years old, which is kind of crazy. But anyway, uh, Katie says, just bought the solo Sunlight and Sauna two weeks ago. Currently listening to this while sweating in my sauna. Katie amazing i absolutely love that that is really really cool um uh, this whole pandemic has made me realize uh how much i want a home gym and a sauna i know you know I, i'm just so grateful that about three years ago i invested in our home gym which is very minimalistic uh, i bought uh, off craigslist and facebook marketplace i piecemealed a bunch of stuff together but it's it it's going to make going back to a real gym so wonderful I mean, if, if there's any silver lining in this whole pandemic, which is, has been a total cluster, going back to real life is going to be like, ah, I can go to the store. I can go to my friend's house for dinner. I can go to the gym. Like, it's going to make life, like, we're, friends, we're on freaking house arrest. I mean, if you look at the definition of house, house arrest versus stay-at-home orders, they're <laughs> pretty close. So, it, it's a crazy social experiment uh sunny stiver says psychoneuroimmunology is the single most important word i have ever learned or spoken suicidal ideation is a state i walked around for the past on this planet for the past decade and i love it um i'm with you man psychoneuroimmunology which is how your thoughts affect your body's immune system and you can even expand that word into say psychoneuroimmune and endocrinology so not only do your thoughts affect your immune system but they affect your endocrine system so your body is listening to the words that you are saying, okay? So what does that really mean on a practical level? Well, if you're having a shitty day, all right, you can reframe how you perceive that to be. You can say, you know what? Today is a reason for us to re-examine what we're doing. I need to change my thought process. I need to change how I'm approaching this. Today's a learning lesson. If you dwell on a, today's a shitty day, I suck. I don't have what it takes to be good. I'm an imposter. I'm a fake. I suck. All those things, then you're going to start to believe that and your body is going to react to that. You know? So I like to say, look, I'm strong. I'm confident. Again, if you want to, there's a book. Oh gosh, maybe I could find, give me one second. All right. This book by Herbert Benson. Okay. I read this in 2007 when I was going through a really tough time. And he has this thing called the relaxation response. So just a little quick backstory. Herbert Benson has worked a lot with cancer patients. And he found that there was a difference in outcomes in cancer patients that had terminal cancer and stage four cancer with regards to their mental state. Individuals that, that were more positive, that practice mantras and, you know, positive thinking and positive affirmations tended to live longer and survive longer than individuals that have had a doom and gloom mental uh, state. So he created and dubbed this thing called the relaxation response. And again, this was, this was at, right after college. I don't want to get into the backstory, but I'll just very briefly, uh, I started overtraining. I crashed my hormones, got, you know, anemic, uh, stopped focusing in school. I, I went from the like, top of the class to like D student. And I really wanted to go to med school. My, you know, prospects of getting into a med school that was of any legitimacy, but, you know, went down the tubes. So I got really depressed because I was like, well, damn, I can't go to med school. So what the hell am I going to do? And it was like this weird limbo state. So now that you know the backstory, 
I really had to dig deep and, and work on my mental well-being because I was in a bad, bad place. And this was one of the books that really, really helped me. Timeless Healing. Again, I haven't read it in over a decade. It's been about 12 years. So I, I don't even know if it's so pertinent today. I'm sure it is. You know, he created this thing. So I use this relaxation response all the time to tell myself that I'm capable, that I'm able to do the things that I want to do, that I'm smart enough to do the things I want to do because I would always doubt myself. And so I, you know, it, it, I don't know if this is normal. For some people, it's like the default state. Um, and if, if you're one of those people, and Sonny just you know, alluded to this fact that it changed the way he viewed the world. The other book, uh, Emotional Intelligence EQ by Daniel Goleman, is great as well. Uh, that was when I first you know, learned about psychoneuroimmune endocrinology. Again, PNI or PNEI. So great stuff here. So um, anyway, um, yeah, Mike says thanks for this information. Uh, yeah, no, I'm more than happy to share that. <sighs> All right. Uh, guys, uh, you know what? It's really cool that you're here. I really appreciate you. Um, these are these are weird, weird times. So um, I'm just grateful that you're here. I'm grateful for your subscriptions, your comments, your engagement. Um, it's awesome. I know there's some trolls out there. It's all good. There, there's trolls everywhere. But I uh, uh, hope you are doing well. And uh, if there's anything I can help you do, I've been a lot more active on the comments because I, I have a lot more time. I'm, I don't have to sit in the car and drive around and things like that like, like you. So um, leave a comment uh, on this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please hit that like button. We'll do more of these. And uh, if you have any topics that we should talk about, oh my gosh, I got five like uh, <laughs> thumbs down already. That's funny. Um, so again, if you're, if you're here and you're like, dude, this is, this is cool. We should do more of these. Uh, hit that like button. Um, definitely have a lot more flexibility and time to do that. And uh, have a great weekend. Have a great night, and uh, we'll catch you soon. Appreciate you tuning in. Bye-bye.